Hello and welcome to the Chris Berkman Experience. I'm here at the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame in Nashville, Tennessee with Jen Bostick. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I am too. I've actually never been to this Hall of Fame, so this is exciting. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. <laughs> I'm looking around in awe, so I'm so excited because you just got back from the UK. I did last night, yes. literally like 12 hours ago. <laughs> so like, just talk about your experience a little bit. Uh, food, travel, let's hear about it. I feel so blessed to get to travel all over the country and now the world, which is amazing. I was just in the UK for 10 days. I had a lot of tea, a lot of cake, a lot of cake, probably too much cake. But they have, my favorite thing they have over there is scones with clotted cream and jam and butter, fat free, of course. Oh, yes, you know? yes. Yeah. So those are delicious. Yeah. I need to find out if they do it somewhere here because, which I probably shouldn't. But no, I, I'll find out for you. <laughs> I'll have them. But, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to talk about your artistry today. So um, today you performed for us Miss and a Man. You performed Not Yet and then Jealous of the Angels. Uh, Miss and a Man just got released to radio in the UK three weeks ago and then Monday it gets released here in the US? It's coming out as a digital EP okay. worldwide on Monday. At this point, probably not going to release it to radio quite yet mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But... Um, it's coming out so people can get it. They can find the video on YouTube. It's, I think we just went up to 200,000 views this week, so I'm excited. Yes, and that's <laughs> Gen Bostix Vivo, Vivo, so please watch it. Please watch it. We need to get those up to 500,000. Let's do yes, that. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, talking about Missing a Man, now I did hear that that's your third release as a single in the UK, and you're one of the only independent artists to have three radio singles in the UK. Yeah, all three of them have been playlisted to BBC Radio 2, which is a huge honor. I, like, every time I find out about it, I, I just flip out that day. So it's been amazing, so humbling, the people that I've been able to meet, like, through the, Twitter and Facebook, like, all the yeah. people from the UK that are reaching out, and then also just the radio DJs are so supportive. When I was over there, I did six radio interviews, too, and it was just, like, everybody's so supportive and wonderful and warm, so good that's great now one thing I didn't want to hit I didn't talk about earlier the Miss and Man had a cameo appearance on Vivo I meant to ask you about that who's who's in that video <laughs> my wonderful husband and photographer Michael Ernst yes. he has taken all of my photos for my album for free which is that's been amazing yes. to have somebody who cares about the subject and is actually taking pictures but he's just the greatest husband in the world. We've known each other since I was two and a half years old. So it's been a long relation. I guess we've been dating. We dated for a year and then we've been married for almost three now. So it's tough with me on the road all the time, but it was fun to just kind of focus that subject of I'm on the road and I'm missing him. And you know, like that strength that you have to like work towards marriage. And it, it was really fun to just have him jump in there. <laughs> now road, you're talking about being on the road now. How do you stay encouraged and, and, and how do you, you know, keep going as artists? Because I think it's pretty hard sometimes as an artist in artistry to be motivated. Yeah, my faith has a lot to do with it. I would not be here, <laughs> obviously none of us would, if it uh, wasn't for that faith that I've got. And I feel like that quiet time every morning of just reading my devotional and just focusing my mind for the day is so key, especially on the road. You know, when you're running from place to place to place, it's you know, to sit in that still moment and just say, wow, I feel so blessed for these opportunities and that I'm able to play music for a living. Like, I, yeah, that blows my mind every day yeah. as well. So I feel like that has so much to do with it. And then I'm constantly being inspired and encouraged by other musicians and by like the fans. The fans do so many awesome projects to encourage me, which is so sweet. I just got a video of that they put together of Not Yet, where oh, yeah. it was like their own music video, and in it they're like holding up signs of like things that they accomplished and achieved. I was bawling, I was bawling. So amazing fans, amazing friends, amazing family, so yeah. feel blessed. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> I, I just, wow, I can't get over that, because it's just, you know, I think you as an artist provide a source that not a lot of people tap into. And, and you know, you have people t talking about drinking, but you provide hope and, you know, that faith that you were talking about, I can tell that that is something that you, that you have ingrained inside of you. And, you know, you write about what you know, you know, so you can definitely tell in your music that that's something that you're passionate about. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much. That is the biggest compliment you can give me. And I think coming off of my first record where I moved to Nashville and I thought, I want to be the next Carrie Underwood. And I was still really trying to figure out who I was as an artist. And I released this pop country album that was very country. And the more that I kind of started writing more and realized, okay, my voice kind of lends itself a little bit more to pop. My, you know, I play piano. I, I love, you know, Sarah Bareilles, Bonnie Raitt, mm -hmm. Sarah McLaughlin, none of which are country artists, you know. So but I love country music and I love writing mm -hmm. for it. But for me as an artist, it wasn't seeming to gel as much as I'd like it to. So the second record, I kind of had the opportunity to step back and say, okay, why did I fall in love with songwriting in the first place? And that was, I mean, that was the first thing my dad, you know, taught us is music and how to sing and how to, you know, express ourselves in that way. And it was the therapy that got me through his loss, which is where Jealous and Angels came from. And to put out a record like that, where it's, most of the songs are so personal to me and have such deep meaning that now I can just share my heart with the audience and it's not you know just about oh here's another you know fun song that I wrote you know which my first record was such a great lyric experience and I still love playing some of the songs off that but now it's like here's my world here's my heart raw and that to me is the best way to express myself. With your yourself if you could go back 10 years what advice would you give yourself? Oh my goodness I think just telling myself that it's going to be a tough road it's not going to you know not going to work out exactly how you always plan it. You, I, I think I put it in such a box. I think I said, you know, like, oh, well, this is this is the thing that I see working for other people, so this is the way I, exactly the way I need to do it. And I think when I stepped back from that and realized, okay, this is just creating and sharing and loving what you're doing. And if, when I realized that, which took me probably a year and a half, so when I got to Nashville even, so like I had my whole time in college that I could have figured that out too. So I think I just would have said, hey, what do you do best and what do you love most and why do you love it? And really answer that question right after high school. If I, you know, could have gone back that far, who knows? Like the catalog might be bigger. But I think it's those experiences that I had to pull from. I mean, that's where not yet came from. Yeah. Just the frustration of banging my head up against the wall thinking, what am I doing with my life right now? Like where how am I ever gonna afford my life? Like <laughs> as an indie artist. But I mean, I feel so blessed to be learning and growing and constantly getting new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not yet, I think truly will help anyone, but especially the singer, songwriter, the artist that is struggling here in Nashville. So I think you're going to hit a large audience on that song. Thank you so yeah. much. It's just, it's a great song. It's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, but I, I thank you so much for coming today. And I do want our uh, viewers to like your Facebook page and follow you on Twitter, um, at Jen Bostic. Yes, it's at Jen Bostic, J-E-N-N-B-O-S-T-I-C. And then on my website, you can find photos and tour dates and CDs and all that fun so stuff. Much so out. it's jenbostic.com and facebook.com slash jenbostic. Oh, so excited. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Jen. Thanks for having me. Just remember what you're saying is a funny way of coming back around. Go on and take your sweet time. It's just my